Now, you have to be careful though because uh, we'll talk about it later. You'll with examples I'll show you, but when you're talking about you know the measure of a certain angle, you write M, a little M in front of the angle sign and the ABC after it. And the reason why you do that is because let's say for instance you're referring to a particular angle here and it had you know 68 degrees okay and it was a b c well you don't just say angle a b c you know angle a b c is equal to 68 degrees you, you can't say that because angle a b c refers to a geometric figure versus a quantitative measure okay you're talking about quantity what is the measure of this angle ABC the measure of the angle ABC or measure measure of angle ABC is equal to 68 degrees Ah, okay first of all when you see this M in front of here then usually you're gonna have some kind of sign like this like an equal sign or a less than sign or a greater than sign okay that that's a you know you'll always see those together but you'll never see angle ABC is equal to, you know, angle XYZ. It, that, that's not right. That's not right. As a matter of fact, the only way you could make this right is by either putting an M in front of here. Measure is equal to measure. Always remember that. As a matter of fact, I want to write that down. Measure is always equal to measure. Okay. But let's say, for instance, you want to prove AB, angle ABC is congruent to angle XYZ. Okay, after you've proven that they are have equal measure, then you can say angle ABC is congruent to, and this is the sign for congruency. It's a little squiggly sign with an equal underneath it. Is congruent to uh, angle XYZ, and they usually and they're always going that order. So if you're proving congruency. Measure usually comes first, um, unless it was given to you already. The measure always comes first, and uh, if you're proving uh, equality, meaning the you know two things are equal to each other in measure, then you have to state that they're congruent before that. So just make sure you don't mess that up. You'll you'll get it. I'll go over examples that cover that, but just make sure you understand that and listen to the way I'm saying it. You know, if you're proving congruency, you usually uh, always have to show that they're equal measure before uh, okay when it comes to angles okay I'm, I don't want to start elaborating too much on that because like I said this is just a quick video on notation but you know I'm already kind of going over things that uh, you need to know that I could later mention but I think right now is a good time to go over it so that way you're not shocked when you see it okay so I already covered uh, about the angles here and their measures and the notation for uh, angles. Um, what I was going to show you here with this over, with this was just an example, you know, um, that you know you start off with a point, then two points determine a line, and then uh, you have a third point determines a plane, and with those points you can actually create lines. Um, an uh, I'm sorry, an angle, but an angle. Uh, let me. It, let me formally define the angle. An angle basically is composed of two rays with a common point. Um, that common point is the, called the vertex. So in this case here, we'll say A, B, C. And notice here I have little points on the rays. You can put them, like I said before, you know, some teachers don't mind that you don't write it down. It really, it's not going to make a big difference because people know what you're talking about. But this does lead to a very specific ambiguity uh, when it comes to angles because what I'm showing you here is only you know just one type of angle I'm showing you this angle here as a matter of fact this same angle ABC can be called angle B okay now you gotta be careful about that oh and here as a matter of fact the way to label that is angle B and there's also a quantitative uh, representation of that and that's M measure of angle B now be careful 
because you'll have something that looks like this. Okay. Now, those are supposed to be little arrows. Let me make those a little neater. Okay. So you have angle ABC is this angle over here. Here's angle ABC, ABC, okay? Now be careful because angle ABC is different. You have an angle ABC. You see, you also have an angle ABD, an angle ABD. And you've also got an angle CBD. You have an angle CBD. So when you refer to angle B, you could be referring to any one of these three angles here. So you got to be careful, and you have to do it in, in that particular order too. Um, you can, you see how I have ABC. It, it doesn't. You could say CBA. So ABC could be written also as angle CBA, and this over here can be written as DBA. And the last one can be DBC. DBC. And you see why, right? Because it's really the same angle. But don't, like I said before, don't confuse, you know, the order. Um, you don't want to call this ACB because then that would not be the same angle as ABC. So, okay. So that's pretty much what I'm going to talk about as far as some of the notation you have to worry about. Later on, I'll talk more about you know different types of angles because I'm only showing you just you know the notations all this is just notation and the reason why is because in other videos uh, later on I'll explain you know proofs and you need to be able to refer back to you know you have to be able to know what I'm talking about and you have to know what some of the symbols mean and the last thing I want to mention is space after all when you're working in geometry you're working in three-dimensional space. Uh, three-dimensional space has length, width, and depth. And when you're talking about like up here we see like the point P, this uh, line AB, and we even have this plane P in here. Well this doesn't all, ex you know, doesn't all have to exist in one uh, in one plane. As a matter of fact you can have two planes intersect and then you definitely have three-dimensional space right there. And when you intersect two planes you have a line but that's a different topic. But anyway, space is defined as the set of all possible points. And that's it. All right, well, I hope this is a good intro for you. And uh, as I said before, good luck with your homework and tests in the future. And thank you for watching.